laptop ready to export this to EPUB. Are you all ready? Let's dig in. Okay, so to export to EPUB here, um, make sure, first thing, make sure that your conditional text is turned on, those page numbers. If it's not turned on, it's not going to export. Um, and then go up to File and down to Export or hit Command E on your keyboard. Choose Reflowable EPUB. Um, fixed layout is a different flavor of EPUB and it's uh, we're not going to talk about that, that in this video. Um, so choose Reflowable EPUB, name it whatever you like, um, and put it somewhere where it's easy for you to find. So I almost always put it on the desktop. Um, and then say, yes, I want to replace that. That one is junk. Okay, let's look at these suite of options. Uh, you can manipulate InDesign into creating a better ebook for you in a number of ways, ranging from setup tricks to using styles creatively. But many tricks are also buried in the extensive EPUB export options, and so I'm going to walk you through some of those choices. The very first one is arguably the most impactful. One of the most useful things you can do for the accessibility of your ebook content is also the simplest. Opt for EPUB 3 instead of EPUB 2. So um, I think I'm working from InDesign 2023 version 18.1. If you're working on anything earlier than that, it would default to EPUB 2.0.1. It now defaults to EPUB 3 thanks to some advocacy uh, work that a group of us are doing. Um, so, but opt for EPUB 3 instead of EPUB 2. EPUB is a specification that's divine defined by the International Digital Publishing Forum, also known as the IDPF, an organization that was folded into and taken over by the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, in 2017. Maintenance of the EPUB spec is now assumed by working groups within the W3C. The EPUB spec was approved in 2011, so that's uh, full 13 years ago, 12 years ago now. What year is that again? Anyway. EPUB 3 assumes the EPUB 2 spec but takes a slight left turn to a set of definitions that are explicitly accessible. A major goal of EPUB is to facilitate content accessibility through navigation, structural hierarchy, rich media, and semantic HTML. So let's dig into that. So here is, so this is where you choose EPUB 3. Bam, done. That's all you have to do to get an EPUB 3 out of it. And then, um, uh, so um, another thing of note is this. Some retailers report that up to 60% of brand new content is still EPUB 2, and the work of having to accommodate that older specification is significant for EPUB vendors. There is nothing wrong with EPUBs made to the EPUB 2 spec per se, but we would compare it to opting for something flat over something three-dimensional. Um, so please consider selecting EPUB 3 the next time you make EPUBs. So, and then the other things that are happening here are um, you need to point to a cover. So I have a cover just sitting right here on my desktop, cover.jpg, that I've connected to. You can also, here is where you point to that nice TOC style you spent some time making. So you choose multi-level TOC style, and then you point to the one you made. And that's why I call it EPUB. It's easy to find it here. I have worked on books where there's a whole bunch of different TOC styles. This is the best place to get it. Um, and then if you're asking for, if you've used edit all export tags to tell it which paragraph style tag to um, split the document on, then here's, this is where you would leave it. You'd say split the document and default to that. You could also, um, split it based on that uh, chapter title uh, paragraph style. You could do it that way instead, but um, I'm going to leave that as the default. I'm going to just leave that anyway. Okay, under the text window, there's a couple of notable things. So let me switch that. Um, you can opt here to remove forced line breaks. So I have worked on a lot of content where there were um, a ton of forced line breaks as part of the typesetting practice and that's where this came in handy. It's just that it's a bit of a trap to click it here because you could sometimes um, remove a forced line break where there's no word space and so then two words get smushed together inadvertently or um, 
uh, I don't know there's lots of ways that that could go sideways so I, I, I never click that I'm gonna be honest because it makes me too uneasy I have used forced line breaks intentionally in uh, my typesetting and so I just leave that off um, and then uh, map to so the lists you map I, I leave this as default map to unordered list and map to ordered lists I'm a little bit confused about why this is here I don't I can't think of a context in which you'd want it to convert it to text it, it's important to leave lists as lists because converting a bulleted or numbered list to text will strip that content of meaning in some contexts so the way that a bulleted list gets read if it's not marked up as a list is as a long run-on sentence without pause and without any indication that it's a list so that wouldn't be a good reading experience um, for accessibility reasons leave these lists mapped to ordered and unordered lists and then um, right here is where you choose how to treat footnotes in your content so after the paragraph at the end of a section or inside a pop-up footnote so whichever suits your content best this is where you would choose it um, for the, I have embedded one footnote in this content and I'm going to leave it at the end of the section which means it will come out at the end of that paragraph um, in uh, under the object tab let's switch over to here there's a couple of things here that are of note so in general I leave most things to the default this is one that I would fix so the default is CSS size for objects um, is fixed I always choose relative to text flow um, for one main reason that gives me more responsive sizing in the CSS so instead of sort of having um, images that are 450 pixels wide and 600 pixels long I will get something that's 85% wide and 60% long for example so it uh, that means that the CSS will be output in percentages rather than pixels which is extremely useful fixed is useful sometimes but generally I um, opt for relative if I really need fixed I can fix it in the CSS later um, we've done a lot of work on this content so do not choose to obj ignore object export settings that would be a waste of our time uh, and then other general things I just leave to default okay conversion settings under conversion settings I would encourage you to opt for JPEGs over PNGs or GIFs um, for the sole reason that JPEGs are generally a more efficient file format than PNGs or GIFs I'm never sure if I'm saying Jeff properly but I don't care um, so using JPEGs results in a more compact EPUB which is generally more accessible in that you know there are a ton of readers who don't live in a high-speed internet environment um, and the smaller the EPUB size the easier it is for them to use that book it just makes more usable content um, larger is harder and clunky to use especially on older devices for example um, under HTML and CSS here's some there's some hidden gems in here it's fair to say that InDesign does not write a very good ebook CSS and we'll see a lot about that in a in a future video it exports far too much information including things that will definitely interfere with accessibility so um, this is a place where you could opt to uh, pardon me you could opt to add your own CSS you could opt to not include um, uh, classes in the CSS have a really bare bones CSS or to um, you know include CSS but not include local overrides um, this is where you opt to include fonts and then here is where you could add a style sheet you could link out to a separate style sheet say that you use for a series title um, something of that sort so there's some there's some really useful things here um, we'll get into the InDesign CSS in a little bit but um, this is a place where you could manipulate it and opt entirely out of InDesign CSS JavaScript is where you would add files for interactivity or for any sort of simple animations I generally don't do that because it doesn't work well across the dev device spectrum and JavaScript has some accessibility issues so ignore that altogether 
The metadata window is where that little bit of um, metadata that we put into, um, into the file, file info window, that's where that, that gets preserved and it gets pulled through here. I do have, you do have to type in the publisher name because that wasn't part of that. And then he, up here is where you would put an ISBN if you have one. Um, this is a this is the place to put it, uh, and I'll explain that what this string is in a little bit when we're editing the EPUB. And then finally, under viewing apps, you can ask it to open in Adobe Digital Editions or um, any other e-reader that you have loaded on your device. So I have Thorium and the Apple Books app. I generally start with Adobe Digital Editions because it is in a way the least capable of the reading systems and so if there's going to be problems they'll be extra highlighted in Adobe Digital Editions. Um, uh, Apple Books and Thorium are more forgiving and so it's not a, in a way not a true experience. So I always opt for Adobe Digital Editions. So that's those are all our export options. When you click OK it's going to export to an EPUB and then and then we can really dig into the code and to the cleanup. I hope this has been useful.